All right, I said we would go on to shape. Don't write the word shape. There's a different word that starts with S that we use to describe the shape of a distribution of data. Uh, it has to do with which way the data leans. Does anyone know the word? Say it again, louder. Skew, okay. So if you can write down the word skew for me, or sometimes in textbooks um, and out in the statistical world, they'll sometimes call this skewness, uh, but it's the, it's the same deal, okay. Now, much like with modality, there's roughly speaking three kinds of skewness that we're interested in. One, two, three. We'll have a look at the middle one first because it's actually the one that you tend to see a lot or associate with data. I even drew one on the board, okay? Skew is about which way a, a data set leans. So it's actually also to do with symmetry or lack of symmetry as we're about to have a look at, right? So being that it's about symmetry, if you have a data set like this unimodal one that I drew before, that's like, oh, it looks pretty balanced between the left and the right, yeah? Um, it doesn't have any skewness to it. It's symmetrical. So this is... Whoa, I'm doing terribly here. This is the first kind of skewness that we're interested in when you don't have any skewness at all, okay? Now then, if you, and I'll, let's draw one here. So this is right in the middle, okay? You then have two other kinds of skewness that we're interested in. And you have to be really careful in how you draw them. I'm gonna draw one like this. So there's a, a hump here and then there's a long tail going that way. And then I've got another one here where there's a hump here and a long tail going that way, okay? now. This is counterintuitive, lots of people get um, fooled by this, but we'll do our best, okay? One of these is positive skew, and the other one is negative skew. Which one is which? Does anyone know which one is which? Yeah, go ahead. Um, the one on the left is negative, and the one on the right is positive. This is negative skew, well done. You can all jot it down with me. This is negative skew, and this is all the reason why, by the way, I gave it to you in this order. Negative skew, no skew, and then we call this one positive skew. Now, the reason why I kind of flagged is a bit weird, right, is because most people would say, hey, 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 when you have a look here, the thing that dominates this data, like you can see the mode right there, right, it looks like it's on the positive side, in that direction, to the right. So why do we call it negative skew, right? There's two ways, at least, that you can think about this that I'll try and highlight, okay? The way that I got taught, which was completely dissatisfying to me, but it worked, is you have a look at where the tail is. So have a look at where the tail is. Be interested in the tail rather than in the mode. So this is one way to say, look, that tail is facing in the negative direction, so this is negatively skewed. Okay, that's one way to think about it. This is actually the technical definition. Can you go ahead, on all three of these, can you mark in the mode for me? So, this would be the mode, this would be the mode, this would be the mode, okay? You remember we talked before about the fact that you've got different kinds of measures of central tendency? We've got mode, we've got median, and then there's the one that we looked at this morning, we calculated, which was mean, right? Now I want you to have a think about each of these, right? All three of them, in fact. Where would the mean, the average, be in the relation to each of these three data sets? We'll do the easiest one first. When you've got a symmetrical data set, the mode and the mean, they're roughly equal, right? So I'm going to put x bar, I will never forget my pencil case again because I'm so irritated. Um, X bar, I'm gonna put right there on top of the mode, okay? When you have a look at this negative skew over here, right? You've got a big peak in here, but, actually sorry, I take it back, let's, I'll give you a better example of this one. You've got a big peak here, down the bottom, but then you've got this trailing tail up as you go in the positive direction. Now my favorite example of this is world income. In fact, let's just write that. For example, world income. Why is it that world income looks like this? It's positively skewed. Hmm. How would you say, Josh? Uh, because, like, all the rich countries are significantly richer than the Yeah, very good. So, um, if you have a think about up here, right? Uh, you've got uh, you've got all the the millionaires and billionaires and so on, right? Um, you might call them oligarchs, depending on what country they live in. There's not that many of them in the world scheme, okay? But they hold a huge amount of wealth, so by definition, there can't be too many of them, okay? But think about the impact that they have on the mean. Think about the impact they have on the mean. Let's suppose there's us here in the room, there's 20 of us, and let's just say our income is, I don't know, not a bad graduate salary, let's call it $100,000, okay? So at the moment, the mean and the mode are both $100,000. 
Make sense? Okay, let's put, let's put Jeff Bezos in the room. A single outlier, someone on this trailing tail. Does anyone know what Jeff Bezos is worth? I actually don't know the answer. Two dollars. Okay, so depending on how you calculate his net worth, right? But let's just pluck a number out of the air. I'm pretty sure he's not just a millionaire. I'm pretty sure he's like in the order of like hundreds of millions, okay? Now this is not a rhetorical question. What's the mean now? Can you get your calculator out and tell me? I know roughly where it is, but I I'm actually interested in a number now, right? We knew, without Jeff in the room, we knew what the mean was with precision. Now there's 21 of us in the room, including this guy who earns $100 million. So can you give me now a figure for what the X bar is when you include our Amazon owner? What do you got? You got a number for me? Yeah, Josh, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm, oh. I'm just saying that Jeff Bezos' net worth is 171 billion. Okay, I was like, so in the wrong, shall I put some more zeros in? I think we'll get the point, even if we do 100 million, okay. Got a number, yeah. I'm just gonna write 47 million, is that okay? Yeah, okay. 47 million, one outlier, right? So this is happening from the skew in this data. There only has to be one person up there, so long as they're this far off, and it, apparently I was 1,000 times, less than 1,000 times off the amount of money. $47 million is nowhere close to any of us, right? Does that make sense? So where is, and um, again, if you've got different color, you can see where I put this in a dashed line, right? Where is the mean going to be? It's gonna skew which way? Positively, does that make sense? This is the actual definition. When we talk about skewness, it's about where is the mean in relation to the mode. Can I say that one more time? Because it's so important, and this will help you understand why it's negative, why it's positive. This word here, or this word here is, tell me where the mean is in relation to the mode. Where is the mean in relation to the mode? Right? You got most of your people here, but your mean is gonna get pulled away based on where the tail goes. And that's why that was kind of a shorthand that my teachers taught me. Just look at where the tail is, that's the way it's going, right? But I never knew why the tail mattered. It's because the tail does this. Jeff Bezos is the tail. Does this make sense? I hope it actually sticks in your mind meaningfully now rather than just being like a, I don't know why that matters, okay? All right, so let me pause there. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, actually, I have a question for you guys. I gave you a positive skew example. Can you give me a negative skew example? Where is it that we've got like most of the people up here and not that many people down here? 20 Jeff Bezos. <laughs> okay, if you've got lots of Jeff Bezoses, fine, okay. Um, can you give me an actual example from like real life? I'm thinking of one right now because we live in Australia. Yeah. Population density. Population density, what do you mean by that? I mean like, if you look at like towns, mm -hmm. like cities. Uh -huh. The towns have a much smaller population than the cities. Right. Population density. So these are trickier because in terms of population density, like a, qu a question which I would pose to all of you is what would the horizontal axis be, right? We could have a, we know the vertical axis would be density, right? But it's like, well, how do I meaningfully measure this? Maybe you would do it as like distance from the coast or something like that, right? That might be a way to do it because in Australia that would matter. Um, I have one that's related to this with people. You can see often when we look at people, we get interesting patterns like this. Um, I would think of one like and this is worth writing, by the way, because again, like I said, the examples are something you have to learn, not just what they mean, but where are they, right? I would say that mortality in developed countries would be negatively skewed. Let me say that again, mortality in developed countries. What does mortality mean? Uh, sickness, but more specifically, it's like when do people die? At what age do they die, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're morbidity, right? Um, comorbidities and all that. So in a developed country like Australia, right, we actually have an aging population. We have good enough healthcare, good enough nutrition and all that kind of thing that people can live to really old ages. That's wonderful, right? Little babies, how many of them die or children? Not that many because we have good healthcare systems, right? Something to be thankful for in our where we live and also when we live as well, when. Um, this is obviously not the case everywhere, right? In some developing countries, the skew might be more symmetrical or it might even be tragically positive depending on you know, what time in history you were looking at. But does that make sense? You can see why this is, this is important. Once you say negatively skew, I can understand, I can quantify uh, what this country is like based on its mortality.